Hello and welcome to Home of Origins podcast. Today is going to be episode 4 and it's about Empress Menen of Ethiopia. And this will be the first part. It's about her birth lineage, so it's her early years of life, which will include her marriage life and how she met with the Jasmash Tafari, which later became Emperor Haile Selassie. So just make a note that there are some Ethiopian military titles that I'll be using when I call names, like the Jazmach means commander or general of the gate. So if I say Wezero means Mrs. So stay tuned. Empress Menen Asfa was the wife and vice of Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia. She was born in 3rd April 1891, in Ethiopian calendar 25th March 1883, and died 15th February 1962 in Addis Ababa. She was also known with her christening name, Welete Georgis. Empress Menen was born in Wello province, Ambassel region at Agua. She was the daughter of Asfau, Jantrar of Ambassel and Wezero Sehen. She was baptized in St. Delba George Church. Her father Asfau was a direct descendant of Emperor Lebnedengil from 1532 through Emperor Galaudius 1551 and his daughter was Princess Ngulal Galaudius. Emperor Libnadingil was also known as David II of Ethiopia. David II means David II, which is David II of Ethiopia. The title of Jantrar has traditionally belongs to a head of the family holding the mountain fortness of Ambassel, and he was one of them. Her mother was Wazer Osehen Mikhail, half-sister of Lejiyasu, Emperor of Ethiopia, from 1913 to 16. Empress Menen bore a descendant from Prophet Muhammad through her mother, Sihin daughter of Nugus Mikhail, Muhammad Ali of Wallo. In her early years, Wezero Menen Asfa was given in marriage by her family to the prominent Wallo nobleman, the Jazmach Ali of Cheresha, and bore him a daughter, Wezero Belainesh Ali, and a son, Jantra Rasfau Ali. The first marriage ended in divorce, and Wezero Menen then married the Jazmach Amde Ali, Amde Ali, Abadeyas, another very prominent nobleman of Allah. From her second husband, she had two children, a daughter, Wezero Desta Amde, and a son, Jantrar Gavragzabhir Amde. Following the sudden days of her second husband, sometime in late 1909 or early 1910, Wezero Menen grandfather, Nugus Mikhail, arranged her marriage to Ras Lul Seged at Naf Seged, a prominent Shoah nobleman who was considered older than Wezero Menen. Wezero Menen had no children by Rasul Seged. So we'll continue. Stay tuned. In November 5th, 1910s, she started a journey from Desai and reached Addis Ababa on November 25th. 1910s. Wezero Menen probably met the Jazmash Tafari Makonnen, which later became Emperor Haile Selassie, at the home of her uncle Lejiyasu. The rapport between the two may have inspired Lejiyasu to attempt to bind the Jazmash Tafari to him more firmly through marriage ties. He therefore arranged the separation of Wezero Menen from Ras Lul Seged and sent her to Harar to marry the Jazmach Tafari Makonnen. They were married in July 1911. Ras Lulseged apparently did not hold a gerja against the Jazmach Tafari for this circumstance, 
blaming it entirely on the Jiyasu, who had ordered it. He was among the leaders who fought on the side of the Jazmaj Tafari Makonen in the Battle of Sagal and died in that battle. In October 17, 1916, Lijiyasu was overthrown from his authority of ruling the country, even though their grandfather King Mikhail made civil war since he was at the side of his son Lijiyasu. Princess Menon kept her promise with her husband, Crown Priest Jazmach Teferi, and showed her loyalty, helping him up to the end. Lijiyasu succeeded by Empress Zoritu, who gave the Jazmach Teferi the position of regents, and in 1928, this position was elevated as she granted him the throne of Shawa. His title was then elevated to Nugus or king. There was incomplete church started by Empress Aitu, which was found in East Addis Ababa around the Dototigat. Empress Aitu spoke to Weza Romanen to complete it. Keeping her promise, Empress Menen invested a lot of money and completed the construction of the church in 1922. In March 16, 1922, the Kidana Mehra Church opened for worship. The church became a monastery called Hamera Noha. With the Romanen, gave her estate to the monarchy, helped those who give service to the church. The monastery is still a shelter for many Christians. There is holy water near to the church, which people immerse in and drink. People from every corner of Ethiopia give thanks to Empress Menon for this gift. So, Satan. On March 1922, Weza Romanen traveled to Jerusalem to visit the birthplace of Jesus Christ. Weza Romanen traveled to Jerusalem by train and ship via Djibouti. After she had visited every part of Jerusalem, she went to Egypt to visit holy places. She gave a lot of money to monasteries, then returned to Ethiopia. Slavery was abolished in a symbolic decree in 1918, this being enforced further in 1923, with Ethiopian scaling it up to League of Nations. On May 28, 1926, Empress Menon donated a large sum of money for the poor children and freed slaves to construct schools. Unfortunately, the following year, on 3rd of October, her mother, Weza Rosehen, passed away in Addis Ababa at the age of 56 years. The funeral ceremony was at Debra Salam Medhani Alam Church. On September 24, 1930, Weza Romanen founded a new school for girls near Gennetrul Palace. Women then started participating in a sphere of knowledge and technology equally as men. Later that year, on 2nd November 1930, after the days of Empress Zoditu, Rastafari Makonnen was crowned emperor. Upon his rise to emperor, he took his regal name, Haile Selassie, means power of trinity. His Majesty Haile Selassie I, conquering his position to be Emperor of Ethiopia as elect of God. Also, his wife Wezero Menon was crowned Empress Menon. Empress Menon and Emperor Haile Selassie were parents of six children, Princess Tenangyewerk, Princess Fawesen, Emperor in Exile, Amaha Selassie I, Princess Sahai, Princess Zeneborg, Prince Makonnen, Duke of Harar, and Prince Sahel Selassie. 
She was well loved and respected empress of her time. The late empress was admired in her lifetime as a virtuous woman. The long-time official at her palace, General Mekonnen de Nege, once described her which means she was the holy lady. Not even a single person says a bad word about her. That was what I have for part one of Empress Menen's story, but will continue the following part two sometime soon. So please stay connected. If you have any suggestions or comments, you can email us info at ethiopianism.com with it. For now, I'd like to say thank you and I'll see you soon in the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.